Bring you on the fucking fun. Fun time with Pepe. Fun time. You make me cry. You're the reason why I cry when I go home. This class. This delights me. You have no idea how much happy this makes me. Because on test day, you might actually fill up my bottle. I have a bottle that says tears of my students, and no one's ever like provided tears. Oh, I got you. You got me. I got you. You got my A. That's not how it works. Uh, that negotiations were progressed. Okay. Math 35, lecture day six. And we're going to wrap up our seven. So here we're going to do radical equations. That's R6. Look at this earlier, too. R7 is on fun time with factory. <laughs> and hopefully, the plan is to get to 9.1, which is linear equations. Well, we don't finish on 9.1. I'm confident we can finish on Tuesday. I just have to extend the homework. <laughs> and Jack is like, yeah, let's drag this shit out. She's going to start asking lots of questions just to make sure we don't finish. <laughs> All right, radical equations. Let's just get rid of that, that fucking piece of shit. Then. Okay, the goal here is isolate the radical. That's step A. Step B, raise it to a power such that the radical is gone. And you got to do it to both sides. Can't do it to one side without the other. Then we'll solve. And D, then we will check for, they are called extraneous solutions. You don't have the green drink. Oh, I stopped going to the place. I just, I make my own. Thank you, I do too. I make my own that one now. Because they switched to, like, they used to have Red Bull and Rock Star, and now they have their own shitty energy drink. <laughs> and they want you to pay the same price. I didn't know it's shitty. Because I had. You tried it plain? I had no choice because I was in a hurry one day and they're like, oh, by the way, we're not doing the Rockstar Red Bull flavor stuff anymore. No, it all tastes shitty. There, <laughs> there is, no, I mean, like, I, I prefer Red Bull, but like, there's, and even Dutch Bros, their own brand of energy drink that they make is just gross. Yeah, and then and then they want to charge you the same price as if you're buying a Red Bull. Like so it's just as expensive. I'm like, dude, I don't want to pay more money like for your crappy drink. I mean a rock star even tastes better than their yeah. energy drink. No, I, I think genuinely Red Bull probably has like a proprietary recipe that is messing up the whole market. They're like they, they probably have some because it's different. I think they all taste like shit unless they're flavored. I know, but then if you have the flavor, can you taste the shitty taste? You can the other shitty energy drinks, yes. All right, so isolate the radical, step A. That means get the radical by itself. 
I said, we got a lot to do. And who's the one that derailed this fucking lecture? You. I did. <laughs> That's how I fucking rolled. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we're extending it. Okay, sounds good. Plus three. I subtracted four and. Four, 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 right, we got to buy sell. Isolate is good by itself, like you're like the, the, the weak herd member. You're thinking of my fucking joke the other day, aren't you? I'm fucking so glad that that's stuck. All I had to do is say it once. What part of it are you remembering, Lauren? I gotta hear it. Well, the first time you told me that I would move you Ryan Reynolds. There you go. I forgot I added Ryan Reynolds. If you're gonna riff with someone, Ryan Reynolds seems like a good choice. He's fucking Right? Like, yeah. You don't have to do it against his will there. Yeah. Less trouble, like, you know, in the long run. So rather than doing it right away, I'm going to rewrite this real quick as a rational exponent. Because it's easier to see if I want to get rid of that radical or have an exponent of one, what I need to do is raise this to the second power. You lost me. One half times two equals? One half times two equals two. That's not true. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> one half two times two equals one. <laughs> so when we do that, like powers like this, where they're a power and then a power on a power, they multiply. So are you always wanting to do it by like a half when you want to get it out of the square root? Well, half represents the square root. Because remember, it's the index outside, which has an invisible two, and the exponent on the inside. I don't have an exponent, so the exponent is one. Does that ring a bell? Now, not working for you, Jack? Is the two working for you? I ain't got nothing. She's like, fucking Tuesday, it came and went. I didn't get anything out of that. All right, I'll help you after class. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if I do that, I get 4x minus 1 on the left. I get 9 on the right. Now we solve normally. So by squaring it, we potentially introduce wrong answers. Yeah. Let me show you how. Like what if I had question mark equal two and we squared it and we get four over here. Well, I know if I started well with question mark equals two, then two squared equals four, but so does negative two squared equals four. There's two things that would give me this when I square it, but there's only one solution in the original. If I start off with just question mark equals two, that's the exact answer. When I square both sides and I get question mark squared equals four, now question mark has two answers. Question mark can equal plus or minus two. So there's a bad answer there. That's the point. Check your work. If you don't check your work, you're gonna get it wrong. So, what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in the very first fucking thing before you do anything. <laughs> so I got square root 4x minus 1. And I'm plugging in I could plug in five and halves, but I think it's easier to plug in 10 fourths. And I'm just gonna say plus four, does that equal seven? And I'm gonna put a question mark to show that I don't know that it's true.
after I get through this problem, I think I'm going to work through Jackie's issue because if she might not be the only one that's like giving me a what the fuck look, but like she's the only one willing to say it. So that's important. So like if I make this four times one and I like do fra fraction multiplication, that just ends up being 10 minus one. So this is the square root of nine plus four. Does that equal seven? Three plus four does equal seven. So x equals 10 fourths so or five halves is a valid solution. So basically, the, the using the fractional exponent is kind of the way I look at most of this. Yeah, it's, it's all of it. The fractional, you don't have to do the fractional exponent, but it makes it easier to see what the correct power is. Yeah. Square being opposite of square root kind of makes sense. Yeah. But what if we had like two thirds or some shit like that? Yeah, that's three over Right, we got some we got some funky shit going on. <laughs> so, so do we have to create like a denominator then between the two sides to do that? No, I, I can. So, if you had a uh, cube root of x squared, right? I could technically cube it, which would be fun. But, or I can recognize this is x to the two thirds. And multiplying by three halves would give me x to the first. Because here, this would give me x squared. And then I still got to do the one half. So three times one half, these two. It's like doing it one step. What if it was, what if it was like a little bit more like a, the format n squared plus bx plus c under the cube. I would just cube it. Cubed, right? Yeah, just deal with the radicals. So, uh, yeah, we're we're gonna do more complicated ones. You have a phone? I said no. I'm my my hands up. But why? Why more complicated ones? We're, we're, we're going to, but we're not doing it yet. Okay. So, Jackie, are you okay with saying this is x equal x to the one half? I don't know where that one half comes from. I don't understand it. Okay, so we had this going on before. Right. And that. this turns into x to the m over n. When we don't show the numbers here, there's an invisible two. Always? Or index. Always. If nothing is shown, it's always a two. Oh, that would make more sense. And like for the exponent, there is an invisible one. No exponent means exponent equals one. So if there's nothing, then that's when we have to come up. Yes. And it's just like we wouldn't say we have one car. I drove one car to work today. I drove a car to work today. So we don't use a number for the one for the exponents or coefficients. <laughs> the reason why we, we it doesn't apply with for the index like the a, a one root doesn't make sense. There is no such thing as a one root. So a root with an index of two is the lowest one. So whatever's the lowest one we do, that one they just didn't write it. I don't it's honestly just because mathematicians are lazy fucks. There's really no reason to not write the two, because then it would be clear every time. But we are notoriously lazy fucks. A lot of mathematics were developed. And notations that were developed simply to save very little time. That's an example. 
I saved the time of writing a two. So then the problem that or the X example that you have with the model where it had a three and a two, that you said that that's the same thing as um, two over thirds, correct? Yeah, when we got the cube root of X squared, I start off with that. This is X to the two thirds. Because now the numbers show up and they're easy to identify. And then how'd you get the one half out of that? Or you don't? You can jump straight to X if you do the thing and multiply basically by the reciprocal. Oh, okay. Three over two. The other way of doing it is to do it slowly. You cube both sides first and you get X squared. And then you raise both sides to the one half and you get X. But this is a three and times a one half. Three times one half is three halves. We're gonna do more with it where it'll be a little bit clearer with weird numbers. Okay. Are you okay with this one now? Yeah. Yeah, so the ones and the twos are what we're working with for now. <laughs> yeah. If nothing's shown, use one over two. Okay. Uh, let's do Let's make it plus eight, not plus four. So we'll subtract eight from both sides. And I get the square root of two X plus five equals negative three. So we isolated the radical. This is like a one half, so we're gonna square it. We get two X plus five on the left, we get nine on the right. Start solving, we get 2x equals 4. Divide by 2, we get x equals 2. Everyone good with that so far? <laughs> Let's check it in our original equation. I have the square root of 2 times 2 plus 5 plus 8. Does that equal 5? Two times two is four, so square root of four plus five, and then plus eight, does that equal five? Yes. Square root of nine plus eight, does that equal five? <coughs> Three plus eight, does that equal five? Yes. It does not. Three plus eight is 11. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm like, I kept going. I hope she would recognize it. She's hooked on it being right. So she's like, fuck yes, right? So no. So then X cannot equal So X cannot equal two. So there's no solution. Some students like to write DNE, which just does not exist. Or rather, solution does not exist. Okay. DNA is pretty short to write. Okay. I have some more. <laughs>
I've been in the math lab since 9 30 this morning. I'm pretty proud of it. One more. There is one point we could have recognized that this wasn't going to work. When I got here, I had square root of 2x plus 5 equaled negative 3. Square root, if I just say this is a question mark, the square root of something is always greater than or equal to 0. It's always positive or 0. Oh. So the left side is positive or 0. The right side is negative. Now, there's no world where those combination works. So you could have technically stopped there and said there's no way to get a negative from a square root. But I guarantee you most of you aren't going to that when, when it shows up on the test. If it shows up on the test. All right, you guys ready for a real one? Yes. Wait, what do you mean? Were those ones all fake? No, these are easy. Oh. This is child's play. Oh, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Some people are still writing. I want to make sure everybody's ready. <laughs> Maybe you want to be an acupuncturist. That's pretty close to dental. Dent dentist. Yeah. I'm having the journeys of it now. No, you usually just have blood flying all over the place. Yeah. I know that's not how acupuncture works. Why is you're stabbing people all over? Good to know that you ever decided not be an acupuncturist. You'll make a great madame. <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't know if that's appropriate content for the class. <laughs> but I mean, sorry, I'm out of my mouth. That popped in my head from the movie Armageddon. The dude, they're getting strapped in, they're in there, the fucking, they're in their spacesuits, they get strapped in. She's fucking tightening that shit down. And she, he, he said, if you ever don't work here, you'll be a great, you know, Torture, torturers, or something like that. <laughs> All right, let's kick it up. Oh, 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 two. Oh, 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 oh. If there's two radicals, if there's three, you're kind of fucked. Are we going to get three? No, I would never do that. Okay. I don't want to solve three. If Maybe there's two we'll radicals, go. I'm willing to do two. If there's two radicals, you want them on different sides. Like how they are now? Yes. Like how, how they are now. So, to deal with this radical, we'll just start with it the way it is. We're going to square it, which means squaring this. <laughs> this is not 4 minus x. This is 2 minus root x times 2 minus root x. That's where the problem is. If the radicals are on the same side. This gets messy as hell and the radicals don't go away. So the left side is x plus 1. That's good. The right side, we got to multiply out. I've got 4 minus 2 root x minus another 2 root x plus square root of x squared is x. X 
I should say plus one, not equals one. Oh, never Any questions so far? This is a step that's commonly skipped. People don't write this and just jump to four. They would have four minus x, but notice the four shows up and an x shows up, but it's not minus. And there's some more shit. X plus one equals, I'll do the x plus four first, and then we've got more fine, minus four <coughs> squared x. Well, yeah. Like, would this, but wouldn't that, could that also have been two minus root x times two plus root x? No, because that's not squaring it. It can't be. Oh. If I multiply the other, I could have multiplied it. If I multiply the other side by it, whatever we do on one side has to be done to the other. So squaring it is just taking it, it, it and multiplying it by itself. That's what squaring means. It's just, it's, it doesn't, it's not the same thing as like, like an x squared minus y squared. It's not right. the square, it's the truth. You kind of want it to be, but that doesn't work like that. Yeah, Jeff. So for the two square roots, we don't put them together. Um, how do I see that? I combine them to make minus four square root x. I saw that, but it's only one square root x. And you had two. This is like saying minus two cars and minus two cars. What would I have here? Negative four. Negative four cars. Well, instead of cars, we're going to put in square root x. Okay, so it's just a unit? It's, a, it's an object. Or you can treat it like an object when you're thinking about how, to, how does it combine. Okay. Like, but they have to be the same. All right. Isolate the radical. We still have a radical. We're going to isolate it. I get negative three equals negative four squared X. Not isolated yet. Divided by negative four. And I get three fourths equals squared X. So when I square both sides here, what do I get? Nine over 16. Nine over 16. This is three fourths times three fourths. So nine over 16 equals X. We're gonna check it in a second. You're not gonna like it, but we're gonna do it. Another way you can do this where you're trying to avoid, if you want to avoid trying to square a fraction, we can leave that as negative three equals negative four square root of X and square both sides here. But only when there's nothing added or subtracted to the square root. Squaring it here would give me nine equals 16 X because the negative four gets squared and the square root of X gets squared. And then, then here you just divide by 16 and you get the nine sixteenths. That was fun. It's a good time. This is even more fun. So the easiest way to go about doing this is get a common denominator on the left. 
This would be square root of 9 16 plus 16 16 equals 2 minus, and I'm going to break this square root up into square root of 9 over square root of 16. That's one of our properties of radicals. That makes this a little easier to see what the square root is. Everyone with me on that step? So I turned the one into 16 over 16. I chose 16 because it's the denominator of the other fraction inside. And I just split the radical up here. When you have a common denominator, we can put them together. Nine plus 16 is 25. This is going to be 2 minus square root of 9 is 3 over square root of 16 is 4. And we're still doing a check here, so I'll have my question marks here. So I've got square root of 25 over the square root of 16, which is 5 over 4 on the left. <clears throat> on the right, if I get a common denominator, I got to multiply that two by four over four. And this becomes eight over four minus three over four, which is five over four. So we get five fourths equals five fourths. What's wrong, Jackie? On which part? Okay, so I see where you get it, the three fourths, and I see where you um, square root it to five fourths. How, how are you trying to get four over four? So that I have a common denominator with this one. On both sides? Or like? Like, I'm effectively doing it like that. Two minus three fourths? I can combine that in my head, but a lot of people can't. That is one and one fourth, which is five fourths. If you can't do that kind of arithmetic in your head, what you do is you want to get a common denominator. This denominator has four. I need this to have a denominator of four, but it currently has a denominator of one. Okay. So I multiply it by four over four. This part blown up. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the answers. I guess I guess. I don't know, but um, any as long as you multiply by anything where the top number and the bottom number are the same, that number is still effectively one. But it's yes. to one, so you can't multiply by on either side of the equal sign. Yeah. No matter what, as long as it is actually the same thing on top and the bottom. Yes. You don't want to do with a variable where the variable might be on bottom because the variable might be zero. But when there, whenever the variable, whenever there's a variable involved, whether it's square, cube, whatever, as long as it's an X or code or letter of some kind in there, if it's on the bottom, you have to figure out what, you know, under what circumstances it equals zero, it cannot be. Right. Okay. Or if there is, if, 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 if there's no denominator, if there's no fractions, but you still divide by X, you have to make sure x doesn't equal zero. Plus nine. And sometimes x does equal zero. So dividing by x is the wrong way to go. Oh. We'll do stuff like that eventually this semester. All right. We're going to do it when we get to inequalities, more on inequalities. That's the most usual spot where people divide. All right, this is hard enough, but I want to make sure you guys can do it. So I'm going to give you, oh, let's do this. Let's put it all on one side first. Saul, go for it. I'll have you guys in a few minutes. But go ahead, well, go for it. Leave, leave the class if you want. No. But our first step is to add the 
square root of two x plus five on each side. That is a good step. We do want to separate them. So we'll do that together real quick. Could we have done it another way if we had not taken on that stuff? So that if we didn't do that step first, would it still work if we had squared the entire side with all answers? While you're doing it this way, I'll show you what that looks like. I would argue that that made that worse. We jerked down to one radical, we could still do it. But I would argue this is harder. So don't do that. Don't don't do this. That that's this was the question Davis asked. What if we didn't move it? Like saying, what if we didn't take back a note game before we had T folder? But it's still not technically. Yeah, it should. Wait, should. should. There's probably more answers to check because this is going to have a squared term in it. If there was a squared term in it, would that result in that term? Immediately out of the no, Probably. no, this right here, I would have 8x squared got plus 20x minus 16 or 6x is plus 14x minus 15. The plus and the minus there are fucking it up. You can't do that. When you take it, this something out, it has to be inside of everything. Oh, yeah. And they all don't have x squareds. So then we would have to multiply the entire thing by those factors again. Or I would move these to the other side with the two, and then I'd square, and then I'd have this with some shit on the other side. <clears throat> Who knows? It might clean up just nice, but I'm not thinking so. That would give us, if we did it that way, we brought it to the other side. Okay. 
in the square, then we would have. You need me to finish the second problem, don't you? <laughs> so we squared the other side. This is going down to Davis about the rabbit hole. <laughs> I was wrong, Jackie. It wasn't you that cast the Leia game. <laughs> All right, so we would have had four on the other side because that's two squared. So four equals, I'm going to combine these. I've got six X and then minus three plus five is plus two, minus two radical, eight X squared plus 14 X minus 15. So I'll subtract the two and I'll subtract the six X. And I get negative six X plus two equals negative two that square root shit. Then I would divide by negative two. And I get three X minus one equals square root of eight X squared. And now when I square this, here I got nine X squared minus six X plus one. I did that a little faster than probably students will. But since you're making me go down the rabbit hole, we're doing it at my speed here. All right, I'm gonna get everything on one side. So minus eight X squared. And then we need to factor this. And I don't know that it factors. I would use quadratic formula. And I'm done. Can we see that it's longer here? Yeah. <laughs> Are you good? All right, let's go back to this. Although it didn't look like a factor, so it probably didn't have complex numbers, which probably means there's no real solution. Yeah. But it's still arguably the harder way of doing it. All right. We square it. Should get 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 5. And when you combine like terms, you'll have four square root of two X plus five and then plus four. So I'll subtract two X from both sides. I'm gonna subtract the five and the four from the right, which means subtracting nine from the left. I get two X minus 12 equals Four square root of two. two X plus five. I don't think I want to work with fractions. So I'm going to divide by two. This will get me X minus six equals two square root of two X plus five. If I divide the other two, I got a fraction, but this makes at least makes both sides smaller. Square it. Four times two X plus five. Blue pen sucks. Die, blue pen. Yeah. Where do you get the negative lines? Sure, it be negative five. There's a four over here. Oh. I put them together. How'd you get the extra four? Squaring the two. <clears throat> sure. Jackie, this, you had to write them out. I remember I wrote them out. 
I did that. Okay, so the four comes from two times two. Distribute. So this term comes from doing that times that. This term comes from doing this times this and this times this. And the four, which I'll put a little lightning bolt under, comes from doing two times two. <laughs> what did you get that was different? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand how to do the FOIL system when it comes to those two terms and to combine the life terms. All right, let's, let's put this on pause and do that. Make sure everyone's on board with it. So we got square root of two X plus five plus two times square root of two X plus five plus two. Foil F square root of two X plus five squared. It's multiplied by itself. Oh, outside. Outside is plus two times the square root of two X plus five. So that's my F, that's my O. My inside is plus another two, square root of two X plus five. And my last L is two times two is four. Does that make sense, Jackie? What, what part's not working? What, what's, what's wrong with the F? I'm multiplying the first two things together. When they're identical, they end up being squared. I just haven't distributed the square and the square root yet. I'm just showing that that times that equals that because I was trying to avoid the confusion. Okay. And I do outside, I've got square root of two X plus five times two. The two isn't a radical, so I can't put it inside. This is like saying y. Two times y, y times two is just two y. So I've got two square root of two x plus five. So that's f, that's o. I happens to be the same as o, the insides. Two times that, I can't put the two inside. So I just leave them multiplied together. Okay. okay. Everyone good? All right, then I combined them and we got to here. And I dealt with the square root being squared. Then I'm trying to isolate the square root, so I subtract 2x, I subtract 5, and I subtract 4. I could have done another line first that combined the 5 and the 4 and had to say 2x plus 9 plus the square root of 4 times 2x plus 5. Are you with me, Jackie? Yeah. yeah. Got it. All right. So here, I could have left the 4 alone. I didn't want to square 2x minus 12 because I'm 12 squared is a big number. I don't want to work with 144. And I recognize that 2 and 12 and 4 are all divisible by 2. So I said, let's play smart. Let's just divide by 2. If I divide by 4, 2 divided by 4 is going to have a 1 half. I don't want to fucking work with fractions. It's bad enough I have two things on the left. If I have a fraction, this just gets uglier. So I'll leave that over there and I'll deal with that later. So when I square this, that is x minus six times x minus six, which gets us that. The right side square gets us that. And when I distribute, 
that is 8x plus 20. When I subtract the 8x and the 20 over, there should be something familiar on the screen. Only because Davis made me jump through the fucking loopholes. This is what we got when we went and did what Davis did, wanted me to do. X squared minus 20x plus 16. So we're still there, so I guess I couldn't tell you to fuck off and do it yourself. Still gonna do it. <laughs> Which means this isn't a fucking great example because we haven't covered the quadratic formula in here. And I don't know how many of you remember it. The formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's assuming that we start off with ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So that, that is the quadratic one, that form, not the AX, not the AX. That formula. is the quadratic formula. Not that, that's the thing. That, I thought I was not the AX squared plus BX plus B was the quadratic formula, but it's not. It's dependent on you, do they actually get the same thing? I haven't shown you how to do complete the square yet, but when we do, I will show you how to get the quadratic formula starting with AX squared plus BX plus C. Oh, that sounds like a test question. <laughs> All right. So if that radical is negative when it's done, we don't have a real, any real numbers. B squared minus 4AC. A, I'm lining them up. A has to equal 1. Fucking fly is driving me fucking nuts. It's flying around the goddamn room, pissing everybody off. And C has got to be 16. So, motherfucker. Ah! Fucking flail up here like a fucking crazy man. C was 16. This actually has two real solutions. So, let me write it all out. This is why you don't wing the problem, you just create shit on your own. I'm going to do the formula here again where you can see it. And we had x squared minus 20x plus 16 equals zero. This matches up with ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is one, b is negative 20, c is 16. We're going to do a lot more with quadratic formula later. I didn't mean for it to come up today. Four times 16 is 64. And square root of 336, I'm sure is not a whole number because I don't recognize it.
18.33 something. So, Three, three something over two. There's two answers there. Uh, I'm guessing one of them doesn't work. Let's take a five minute break after you're done processing that. Brain perch. Let me just get that vile, vile taste of that problem out of your mouth. Let's take a look at R7. R7 is on. I called this a uh, fun time with factoring. This is really like advanced factoring. And we're gonna go slow. We're gonna start with one you should be able to do, but we're gonna walk through the process of doing it. Back to the quadratic from formula. It's not yet. I did this with the students earlier, but it's a good one to do here. And I'm gonna walk through this slow because the steps I do may seem stupid or not stupid, but slow if you're comfortable factoring now. But when we do the harder factoring shit, you're gonna be like, I don't know what the fuck to do, but it's the same fucking steps. Okay, so when we have four terms, we did, we did talk about this before, we group them. Four terms we group. And when you factor, you look for the, you factor out the GCF, which has A, the, coefficient that works and B, the term with the lowest exponent. If I did this here, what is the term with the lowest exponent? X squared, right? So if I factored this out, what would I have left over? Is everyone okay seeing that that would be X minus one? Yes. We're gonna do that the slow way. Now, picture this. I have that and I multiply this by x squared over x squared, which is, that's one, right? Any number divided by itself is one. Then we're gonna move the bottom x squared inside. So I just move it inside. We talked about exponents. When we have exponents on top and bottom, we divide. This would be x to the 3 minus 2 minus x to the 2 minus 2. This is more than you would normally do. A lot of you are comfortable saying x minus 1 right away because you're comfortable dealing with this. But these are just positive whole numbers. What happens when they're negative or they're fractions or shit like that? It's not as easy to do. This process stays the same. So that's x squared, x to the first power minus x to the zero. And that's how we got the x squared, x minus one. Because x to the zero equals one. Now I'm gonna bring, that was just walking through that left one. Let's bring this part down. I should have another x minus one to factor. And if I do, I already that's what I already had. So I'm gonna put plus one. Because I want to factor out something that's in common. 
This is in both of them. So what I'm effectively doing is again, doing this same process and I bring the X minus one out and I'm left with X squared plus one. I can do the same division thing I did above though. I don't think that's necessary at this point. I think seeing that up here was sufficient. <laughs> yes, it was. The, uh, so, so you can't as easily divide the x squared plus one factor it without having measuring numbers? No. Yes. The sum of squares is has complex numbers. It's not a difference of squares which would be easy to factor. This is, we will learn how to factor later on when we're working with complex, more with complex numbers. We're not doing that here. Generally, we don't in real life. Unless you're dealing in a subject or a field that you know uses complex numbers like electrical engineering, you won't bother with this. You'll say that doesn't factor further. Okay. Jackie, Appreciate talk to me. I'm confused on the x squared plus one. <laughs> Are you okay with this line right here? Um, yeah, yeah, because that's the first problem that we factored out and bring it down the next problem. Right, right. Okay. Well, actually, if we had just factored it out, I would have had this. But the idea of this is what we would have first when I just factored the first part. The idea of factoring by grouping though is we want the parentheses to repeat. The parentheses should repeat if factoring by grouping works. So I'm going to need another parentheses of that. And the idea is to divide, do the X minus one, X minus one with the X minus one out front which works fine, I get the X minus one, and then I have, this cancels and gives me X squared. This cancels and gives me what? A one. X minus one divided by X minus one is just one. So that's technically, I guess I was going to do the division like above. So we didn't do it. And that leads to that. And there, I didn't jump to the conclusion of doing the plus one. I just wrote what was there and divided by x minus one. You guys ready for the harder shit? Most of you would have just factored the normally and gotten here without all this division. If you're comfortable with factoring basic stuff. <laughs> the reason why I did that is what if, well, well let's do some more. What if it's something like this? Thank you. I've only got technically two terms unless I multiply this shit out. And I don't want to do that. What do they have in common? There's a little more to it than that. They both have this 2y plus 1, right? We're going to factor out a 2y plus 1 
And we're going to do the same thing with the lowest exponent. So lowest exponent again. Which would be the two. You might be able to jump to the next step, but if you can't, this is what we're doing. We do the exponent thing again. Well, the y doesn't have anything with it, so I can just bring the y. This is like smiley face cubed over smiley face squared. Well, it's 2y plus 1, but I could just as easily call it smiley face. We subtract exponents, just like we did with the other thing. So subtract exponents. I'm left with the 2y plus 1 to the first power here, minus a 2y plus 1 to the 0 power. That's not cleaned up yet. So I've got the 2y plus 1 squared out here. Inside, I have, I'm going to clean this up, y times 2y is 2y squared. y times 1 is plus y. And then what is something to the 0 power? 1. So minus 1. Does this factor more? This part right here already has an exponent of 1. This doesn't factor more. This might. <laughs> so we're going to do our a times c and our b. A times c is 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. And we need it to add up to positive 1. <laughs> Negative two right there. Uh, so that would be two and negative one. Those add up to one. So when we're doing that factoring that we did before, this splits into the two coefficients we see plus 2y and minus y. Together, they add back up to positive y, which we had before. So we're all good. But now we want to do by grouping. So this is 2y plus 1 squared. That's still out there, that's my red. If I factor it, what can I factor out of this first group? Two y. A 2y, right? What does that leave behind? A y plus one. I need to get this. This needs to look like a y plus one too as well, if I wanted to group. What do I need to factor out of negative y minus 1? We take out a negative 1, then we'll get that, right? So we finish our factoring. The y plus 1 is in both. We pull that out. 
and whatever's left goes in its own parentheses. And everything now has an exponent of one on the inside. It can't be factored further. They're like, nope, I'm done. Fuck this. If, if we set this equal to zero, we set this equal to zero. We set this equal to zero. We could set each one of these equal to zero. But we're not there yet. <laughs> we will get there. Gotta build a cart before we start pulling it. That's a fucking horse and buggy reference for you there. Horse and cart. All right. You guys ready to kick it up a notch? You see how there's like this was more work? And like dividing out this, you may not have needed to do this division yet. But what about this? So what is the lowest exponent on M? No. Oh, negative seven. Negative seven is the lowest. Four is the highest. What about on N? Negative six. Negative six. <laughs> so we will pull out an M to the negative seven, N to the negative six. What does that leave behind? That's fucking hard. So we can divide each of these by this. And do the subtract exponents again. Now, is that looking like the... Could you jump from this to this, like factor? Probably not. I don't know that I can do it very well. I would probably write it out. So this is m to the negative five minus negative seven, n to the negative two minus negative six. Then we add minus m to the negative seven minus negative seven. I'm not going to have enough room. I'm going to need two lines. Three minus negative six. Plus m to the fourth minus negative seven. n to the negative six minus negative six. Oh, that's rough. I'm sure there's acupuncture in here somewhere. Yeah. Torturous, right? Are you having torture right now? <laughs> I don't know yet. You don't know yet? So we've got m to the negative seven, m to the negative six. What's left inside? Negative five minus negative seven is negative five plus seven, which is two. <laughs> This turns into negative two plus six, which is four. So m squared into the fourth. Then we do the next one. Negative seven plus seven is zero. So I got an m to the zero. And this is three plus six which is nine. 
So m to the zero is just one. This is the n to the ninth. <laughs> Finally, we do the last one. Four minus negative seven is four plus seven is 11. And this turns into negative six plus six, which is zero. And n to the zero equals one, so we won't put it. <clears throat> so it's the same step we did with the other factory, but when you learn to do the factoring without showing the division step, doing this kind of factoring is really hard, right? If I, going from this black stuff to this right here, that's a fucking leap. Even knowing how to, how to factor is still a leap. Wait for another part. No. Uh, let's see what we want to do here. What do you want? You factored further than that. It doesn't look like it. The m having m to the eleventh and n to the ninth means getting the squares just right. There's no way we're going to end up with an m squared n to the fourth by doing normal factoring. I don't know a circumstance where this kind of shit comes up in real life, but. It does help you work with shit that does in a harder form. If you do the harder form, then the fucking easy shit, shit is easier. So this is all one term, and this is all one term. <laughs> so we want to look for what we can factor out. Our GCF, does it have any coefficients? This is a two and this is a three. So the coefficients don't have anything in common, right? What about eight? What should I take out on A? Eight is the A term. We want the lowest exponent. We want to take out eight to the negative three. What about B? They both have the B, so we just take it out, right? What about the 3x minus 1 bit? 3x minus 1 to the negative 4. To the negative 4, right. So what we have left, I'm just going to write the shit being divided. All right, so what do we get? What's left on the inside? So 
So the first thing, it's got a two, right? What about the A? What do we have on A? We've got negative one minus negative three, which is negative one plus three, which is two. So we should have an A squared. <laughs> we saw the Bs go bye-bye. What about the three X minus one? What should I be left with here as an exponent? A one, right? We're doing negative three minus negative four. So that's negative three plus four, which is one. I'll put it there just to make sure we're following along. The last part, it looks like everything cancels out except the three. Anything that shows up on top and bottom, we can just cancel. So rather than getting a zero exponent, a to the negative three is on top and bottom. We cancel them off. We leave behind a one. We cancel out the b's. And we cancel out the three x minus one to the negative four, leaving behind a one. So what we want to do first is take out the lowest exponent. The term with the lowest exponent for each part. That's it. Yeah, that's it. We've got two terms that are not perfect squares, so not reasonable perfect squares. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, We want to make the other there. We could distribute this, but it's not going to help. Like if you did, you would have 6a squared x minus 2a squared minus 3. Is that any prettier? Still ugly as fuck, right? What about the negative exponent from the outside? You do not want to do that. Even like that. It's, it's factored. I mean, we could technically move them to the bottom. That's a good idea. If you want to get the full Davis approach. You're going to be one of those students that fucking does the answer farther than you need to. And I'm going to be like, did he fuck go through? What is this? Is this the right answer? Yeah. Or the depth, you can leave it like this when you're, if there's something like this for the factor out of negative exponent. This is shitty. If they were positive exponents, it might be a little easier to see what to do. This is one over x squared minus five over x y minus 24 over y squared. And I'm gonna rewrite that as one over x squared minus five times one over x times one over y minus 24 times one over y squared. No, nope. like this, minus 24 times one over y squared. We did something like this when we were factoring a little while ago and you're like, this is fucking ugly. We had x and y though, not negative exponents. <laughs> we had x squared and xy and y squared, but the process was the same. 
there's got to be some sort of combination, and I don't know what the coefficients are, but we're going to have a 1 over x and a 1 over y, and there's something here and here. I don't know what the signs are. The FOIL will show you that we're going to get a, the F shows you we get the 1 over x squared. Doing the last show you that we get the 1 over y squared. And both the O and the I get you a 1 over xy. So like one way of looking at this is ignore the 1 over y for now and add it back in later. We did this the last time where I said ignore the y. Now we're just ignoring the 1 over y. So looking at this like 1 over x squared minus 5 times 1 over x minus 24. <laughs> There's that. My wife's trying to kill me. This is quadratic in form. So we can do the factoring thing. If you like the diamond, do the diamond. Uh, it looks like minus eight and three are the factors. Because minus eight and three add up to five, negative five. So I could have one over X minus eight times one over X plus three. And if I multiply these together, I would get that. But that's not what I want. With the Y, I need one over X minus eight times one over Y and one over X plus three times one over Y. I'll bring that one over Y and put it back in. And if you're like me, that looks funny. You could just make it like this. If we went back to negative exponents, we could have done this with negative exponents all the way, but I think that's a little harder to see. The negative exponents throw it off. The negative exponents is the better way to write this final. You kind of want to leave it with what you started with in the same form that you started with. So if you start with negative exponents, leave it with negative exponents, unless told otherwise. If you started with radicals and there's radicals in that solution, leave it as radicals. So what's better than negative exponents? <laughs> fractional exponents, but even better than fractional exponents, Negative fractional exponents. Let's just do it all fucking, let's go for a good one right away. I was going to do just rational exponents and then negative rational exponents, but with eight minutes left on the clock, doing the negative ones is just the harder version of doing the positive one.
Same thing. So our GCF, is there a coefficient part? I can see 28 is seven times four and 35 is seven times five. Is 98 divisible by seven also? It's like 14. Looks like we have a seven. What about my X part? What should I factor out for X? What's the lowest exponent? Negative seven thirds. So we are gonna factor out seven X to the negative seven thirds. To do that, I'm gonna divide each of these by that. What do I get for the first one? What is 28 over 7? 4. Because 28 is 7 times 4. 35 is 7 times 5. And we just saw that 98 was 7 times 14. The X is canceled, right? What about... Um, that bad boy. We've got negative four thirds minus negative seven thirds, which is negative four thirds plus seven thirds. We have a common denominator, so we can put them together. It looks like three over three, which is just one, right? Oh, that's fucking easy. So the sevens cancel, I'm just left with five X to the first power. I'm gonna write the one so that it, we see where that's going. Then we're gonna have the sevens cancel here. We're gonna have minus 14. And we got negative one third minus negative seven thirds. Same process here, we're gonna have negative one plus seven on top which is six, which is two squared. So I'm gonna rewrite this in a different order because I like having the biggest exponent first. In fact, if I pull out a negative, it might be a little bit easier to try to factor some further. 14x squared, if I take out a negative, that'll be positive 5x. If I take out a negative out of the four, it'll be negative four. If I factor out a negative as well. Does that factor? I don't know. A times C is 56, negative 56, and B is five. I don't know. Well, I, need a, I would need a positive bigger number. That doesn't work. Negative two goes in. 28 times, three does not go in, four goes in, 14, we saw that, that's what we started with. This is 55, this is 26, this is 10, if I added them. Uh, five doesn't go in, six doesn't go in, seven goes in, negative seven and eight is one. So we skipped five. So it doesn't factor further. So 
So that would be our final answer. Or if you had left the negative in, having this up here. <clears throat> Thankfully, this shit doesn't come up a lot in class. It doesn't even come up a whole lot in calculus. But it does come up, and so they want us to cover it here, so that because it's presumed that you're following a stem sequence, and you're going to take calculus. If you're not, sorry about your luck. It's part of the class material. So that's R seven. We didn't get to nine point one today. We'll do nine point one, and let me look. We'll do 9.1 and 9.2 in class. And then I think I'll make a video for 9.3. No, I think a video for 9. Point, no, we need 9.2 for 9.3. I'll make a video for 9.3 for your viewing enjoyment sometime next week. Would I go to chapter four? Um, uh, some of it would be chapter five has got, uh, let's see, chapter four only has simple factoring. Yes. So what I just did today is pass the simple factoring. It's not a review. Right. Actually, no, that's further topics in factoring. I guess it's. So I just do some of chapter four and then go and Practice in chapter. Were you okay factoring the first part? The very first one we did. Like, I just kind of got confused. Like, this one right here. Were you okay factoring this one and getting the x minus one and x squared plus one? Um, we started with that and ended with that. I think I have to review that because I, okay. I, it's not my, like, my strong point in math. So yeah, the whole like like other than the one that I, that we did right here, that one I I understood this one. I kind of understood this one. So yes, chapter four had the factoring. Yes. Uh, practice to go to the chapter four and look at factoring there. Yeah. Uh, this is particularly four point two factoring by grouping. Okay, four point two. And then and then the common factors is the other part. So four point one and four point two are the ones that are applicable for this section. And then um and then following okay, four point one, four point two, and then I I want to go to um uh multiply and dividing. Oh oh yeah, we did we did cover it. I was confused on the like the like the foil, the the reaction, but I wanted to do it. foil is probably under four point three and four point four. Four point two, four point three. Wait, for the the fact or the, for the so foil. The foil thing is specific to uh like ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, yeah, right here when we were doing uh this problem, um and we had the foil, we had to bring uh one of the to the other side. Um where would I, I give what uh, foil is just a long way of saying distribute. Oh, okay. Take everything in the first parentheses and multiply by everything in the next parentheses. Oh, thanks. Um, we did that in like chapter three. Or... Chapter three, three point four is multiplying polynomials. Okay. That's has foil in it. Um, so I meant with the with the radical symbol. Would you have it in chapter? Uh, multiplying and dividing right the radicals are in chapter eight so chapter eight and you would be looking at to solve a radical equation that's 8.7 so 
That's what we're doing today. The rest that we did on Tuesday was the rest of chapter R. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. I fucking hate the state. They made it so fucking hard on students. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say, I'm like, I feel like some of the people in here really would have benefited from probably those earlier classes. They would have. They very much would have. We don't. We're not allowed to offer the previous ones anymore. Counseling issues. Oh, that she's like, she's bummed because she can't sell people more classes. Kind of like, 